What's good, everybody? Today's video, we're talking about the zero product property. I'm gonna explain to you guys what that is, how to use it. So zero product property is saying that, hey, if A times B is equal to zero, then A or B must be zero, guys. And typically, you're gonna see, we use this in quadratics, and after we factor, we have to set both our factors equal to zero. So if you look at this problem here, when we're using a zero product property, we have to simplify and break both of our factors down to equal zero. And once we solve, we would get x is equal to 3 or x is equal to negative 9. And typically, we'll express it as a solution set, right? So we'll put it in some braces and then would have it from least to order using a comma to separate each of our answers. So this is a quick example of the zero product property. Now I want to give you another example where they're asking you to use this property to solve. So in our second problem, it looks a little bit different. So we're going to have a factor that is outside of the parentheses. And typically, that does throw students off. But I want to tell you guys, same process, same rules apply. So each of these factors are all going to be set equal to zero. But typically, what happens is students will understand, and they will go in and set x plus 4 equal to zero and x plus 5 equal to zero. But a lot of times they don't know what to do with that other term because it looks different, right? It's not inside parentheses. It's not in the same format x plus something or x minus something. However, the same rules apply, guys. So we're going to do 2x is equal to zero. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and solve and then show you guys the solution set. So once we go through and solve, where I divide by 2 on our first one, we have x is equal to 2. I mean, I'm sorry, not 2, 0. Oh, Russian. <laughs> so x is equal to 0, right? We subtract 4 in our second one. x is equal to negative 4, or x is equal to negative 5. So the same thing applies when we do the solution set now. So we're going to draw our braces. And then we're going to do this, order this from least to greatest. So our answer should be negative 5, negative 4, and then 0. So basically, guys, we're really just setting our factors equal to 0 and then solving. But before we wrap this video up, what I really want to do is to do a problem from start to finish so that you can see. So in our last problem, typically what you see you'll have a problem that looks something like this. And it just says to solve. You have to understand that if you see a quadratic, right, quadratic equation, or if you're factoring and the, the equation is equal to zero, you're going to more than likely use a zero product property. So let's say we had this problem here and they told us to use it. So the first thing we have to do is we have to factor, right? So when I factor this trinomial, I'm going to get b plus 5 times b plus 3 is equal to 0, right? Because when we multiply 5 and 3, that'll give us our constant of 15. And then when we add both of them, we'll get that middle term of 8b. So we factored now, and at this step, we're going to do the same thing we did in the previous problems. <laughs> we're going to set it, set our factors equal to 0. So now I set my factors equal to zero, and I'm going to have as an answer, let's do some math real quick, real quick. B is going to be equal to negative five, and B is going to be equal to negative three, right? And we'll just draw in the solution set real quick, right? Let's finish this thing off all the way. So when we're talking about a zero product property, guys, understand it's an extension of factoring. 
So if you have an equation that's set equal to zero, first thing you must do is factor it. After you factor it, make sure you set those factors equal to zero and then solve for the variable. Hope you guys found this video helpful. This is Algebra with Mr. Peters. We are talking about the zero product property. Thank you guys so much for joining us today.